What's your favorite Star Wars environment? Today, we go over all the worlds that make up Star Wars and the toys that came from them. Welcome back to The Journey. And if you're new, we're collecting the entire Star Wars Kenner line, starting from 1977 and ending at 1985. And yeah, we started from scratch. So if you wanna go back and catch up on all those episodes, please do. So in this episode, I really wanted to go through my favorite environments that came out of Star Wars, and not just the pretty ones. But since this is a vintage collecting show, I wanted to list some of the best toys that came out of those environments. Well, from the original trilogy, and how they rank in my top seven. So let's get started. Number seven, the gas planet of Bespin. The city that floated among the clouds was home to several of our Star Wars heroes, including Lando, Lobot, and the Ugnaughts. You can also find Rami and Jaws here. Rami and Jaws, two Bespin security guards trying to get it right. From getting locked in the lower detention levels. <laughs> okay, I won't play that commercial again. But for those of you who know, you know. And you can find the cloud car pilots who flew the twin cloud car vehicles. And the figure that had a ton of playability for me as a kid, the C-3PO with removable limbs. Now, I do love Lando. And that, in my opinion, was the best thing to come out of Bespin. Although, I did get my mini grail in the blue smock Ugnaught. And if they would have released the Carbonite Chamber in a full playset, that would have moved this up. But we had to get that in the cardboard and playset. Not the best. But the micro collection Bespin world has us dreaming of what might have been. I guess you could include Han and Carbonite, but someone had to get the low spot. And Bespin, you are it. Number six, the Swamp Land of Dagobah. Now, I think this was one of the coolest settings of Star Wars, and some of the best storytelling was done on this planet to further the lore of the Jedi and Luke's story, with his training scenes with Yoda. So why is this so low on the list? Well, not much toys came from here. You do have the cool Dagobah action playset, where Luke can cook Yoda's stew, train, and battle his inner Vader. But the real best thing to come from Dagobah was the Yoda figures themselves. And I guess you can also say that the survival kit had the backpack, so that's good. But Dagobah gets number six. Number five, Yavin 4. So many cool things came from the jungle planet of Yavin 4. Technically, this is where the rebellion had its force that launched the attack on the first Death Star. So we have the X-Wing and the Y-Wing, plus the X-Wing Luke, which was one of my favorite figures growing up. And I had the X-Wing and the X-Wing Luke as a kid. So this one gets a sentimental vote of love at number five. Number four, the forest moon of Endor was one of the coolest settings in Star Wars. And how many of us didn't take our toys out in the backyard and fly our toys or make mini sets in the trees? We all did and so many toys came out of the Endor setting, and most of them army building worthy. From the biker scout and his speeder bike, possibly one of the coolest and most affordable toys for parents to buy their kids. The rebel soldier to army build, and our heroes got Endor versions of themselves. Plus, we got a lot of bears. Ewoks, I mean. I only knew Wicket's name, but that was only because of an Ewok adventure. So I don't know if having that many Ewoks is a good thing or a bad thing. I had Chief Chirpa and Tebow as a kid, and they came with cool accessories in their hoods and spears, but eight Ewoks? Well, if you had the Ewok village, that was cool, but you can get the Robin Hood playset, which is the same mold of the Ewok village, and you get it with trees. You could also get a reissue of the ADAT and the ATST, but we all know where we saw those first. And for the Ewoks, you could also get a slew of mini rigs like the Catapult, the Glider, and the Endor Forest Ranger. Number three, Death Star or Space. Yes, space is an environment, and the movie spent a lot of time in space. This is where you get the Death Star 1 and 2, which can be said that one of the best playsets came from here. The Death Star playsets from Kenner and Palatoy. Where else can we recreate the rescue of Leia? Plus, you got the Trash Monster. And I used to have a miniature version of this with the metal diecast figures. I don't have the mini playset anymore, but I still have some of the metal figures. And you get Vader's Star Destroyer playset. That's always a place that I forget about. We can also thank Space for giving us some of the most iconic figures and vehicles ever. Even the weird mini rig, the ISP-6, Imperial Shuttle Pod, with my favorites being Vader's TIE Fighter and the Interceptor. Number two, Tatooine. This desert planet may arguably get the most screen time out of all the movies, and it's where we see most of our heroes for the first time. Luke, Han, and Ben were first seen here. 
But then you get a massive cantina full of aliens like Greedo, Hammerhead, Walrus Man, and the cantina playset, and the Snaggletooths. But then you get the Jawas, their Sandcrawler, Land of the Jawas playset, the Droid Factory playset, and Luke's Landspeeder. And technically, we saw the Millennium Falcon here first, but we won't count that. You also get the Dewback from Tantooine, and the Bantha. What, they didn't make a Bantha? What? Well, they almost did, but Kenner ended the toy line in 1986, and they scrapped the idea of making a Bantha. So sorry, Sand People. And yes, they also come from Tatooine, as did R5-D4. And I haven't even got to Jabba's palace yet. Wait, why is this number two? Can I change my mind? I mean, it's my show, right? Okay, okay, fine. Whatever is number one next, I'm switching it. Tatooine is number one. So we also get the Jabba playset with Salacious Crumb, the Rancor monster with the Rancor Keeper, the Max Rebo Band, the Tatooine Skiff from Power of the Force, and these weird little mini rigs, the AST-5 Armored Sentinel Transport, and the Desert Cell 20 Skiff. And more Jabba goons than you can name, mention, or want. Plus, we got a reboot of the Droid Factory in a reskin and just called it Jabba the Hutt's Dungeon. I mean, do we need to name all the figures that I haven't mentioned? All right, enough. Tatooine is number one. But before we get to number technically two, here are some special mentions. Alderaan. I guess not. The Asteroid. Well, we didn't get any toys from that except the respirators from the survival kit. No Minox, no Asteroid Slug, so I guess no Asteroid. Coruscant. No! 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 Okay, okay, fine. No Coruscant. Jeez. I didn't like the added Coruscant to the special editions either. And finally, here's number two. Well, technically one. Number one, Hoth. This is technically my favorite of all the environments because some of my favorite toys came from this ice planet. First, you have some of the coolest vehicles ever. The ATSD, which I had as a kid. I loved this vehicle so much. I don't have it anymore, but I would love to pick it up one day after this run. You got to see and own the AT-AT for the first time, which apart from the Millennium Falcon, has got to be the best Star Wars vehicle ever. And we got some iconic Empire figures like the AT-AT driver, AT-AT commander, my favorite, the Hoth Stormtrooper with their laser cannon. Then on the Rebel side, we got some army building figures in the Rebel Soldier, Rebel Commander. And for our heroes, we got R2 with his little pop-up sensor scope and the droids, 21B, FX7, and my favorite Luke figure. And that's one that I lost as a kid. I remember the first day I got him, I tied a parachute to him, threw it up in the air, and it landed on the roof. And I was so scared to tell my parents that I did that, that for days and weeks and months, I waited until that thing fell down, and it never did. And I remember going back to that house as an adult, and the first place that I went was that area that it would have fallen down to. <laughs> and no, it wasn't there. Okay, tangent, so back to the episode. Plus these cool play sets in the turret and probot set, the Imperial Attack Base, and whatever cardboard playset this was, and it was from Canada, the Hoth Ice Planet playset. Okay, not so cool, but they tried. But the coolest one was the Hoth World Action playset. It was a mini set, but still cool. You got some other cool mini play sets as well. The Rebels also had some cool vehicles like the Snowspeeder and the Rebel Transport. And these mini rigs. They are vintage, but I never got into these things. The Radar Laser Cannon it was cool, I guess. But the Vehicle Maintenance Energizer? I guess that's what Han got Chewie as a Life Day present. But we also got creatures. We got the Closed Belly Tauntaun and the Smell Bud on the inside Open Belly Tauntaun. And one of my favorites that I never owned but always wanted, the Wampa. And that is exactly what we're gonna go on the hunt for today. Tauntaun, Hoth, Wampa, and action figures each sold separately. Han Solo, hell, it's got Luke! So if you don't know, I have a list of creatures that I am trying to get. On one list, I have loose ones that I'm trying to get. And on another list, I have them as boxed items. And yeah, I'm trying to get them both. So with my loose display, I'm not gonna try and break the bank to find a really mint and excellent figure. I just want one that I can display in that case. But with the Wampa, you have to watch out because those limbs are the worst for yellowing and over the years, they will get worse and worse. I mean, you can bleach them and put them in peroxide to get them white, but I like finding toys in their natural condition and trying to find the best examples out there. Now, I could buy a pristine Wampa that somebody has bleached and they just didn't tell me. And that's the game you have to play when you're buying things online or even at stores. Because a lot of the times, sellers buy these in lots and they don't ask those questions. So even if they tell you they've never bleached it, someone they bought it from 
could have bleached it. And the best thing that you can do to avoid that is to buy it mint in sealed box. So we'll try to find a mint in sealed box, but if we find a box in great condition that has a great looking wampa, we'll ask the seller if they bleached it. But then again, they might not even know. So we found a displayable version of our wampa for $27 but we did find a lot selling for almost $50 and in the same condition as this one. But the ones that did look pristine white were selling for around $50 and we just wanted an example that isn't too yellow, but one that looks good enough to display with pride and not break the bank. So $27 was fine with me. And I really wanna get the figure of my Hoth Luke, the one that I lost as a child only after having it for one day. So if I get the Hoth Luke, I wanna get one for my display and one for my grading run. We're gonna go on the hunt for a lot of things in this episode. So for my display version, I found one on eBay being sold for $27 for a total of $32.96. And looking at the Star Wars tracker, that's about what's in line for a good version of Luke and isn't out of the price range of what I should be buying this figure for. So we picked that one up and it's a decent looking figure that we will be proud to add to that display case. And after losing this when I was a kid, I was really happy to be reunited with this figure once again. But for the grading version that we wanna buy and send that in, well, we found one at an auction and it just so happened to be selling with something else that we're looking for. Now, I like going on the Facebook auctions to see what's being sold, and I found a seller that sells some premium stuff all the time. He was selling a very nice box Wampa with all the inserts, the Wampa, and the box looks super nice. And let me tell you the reason why I like collecting boxed items. I have a Rancor boxed, I have a Tauntaun boxed, and I also have a Max Rebo Band boxed. And for me, getting all these boxed items with all the inserts and the catalogs and the instruction manuals, that is really the epitome of nostalgia for me. It's like Christmas morning all over again, or it's like walking through the aisles of Toys R Us all over again for me. But some of you are saying, let them breathe, take them out of the box. That's why we're buying two sets. One has a complete box and one that I can display loose. And that's how I want to collect and I know everyone's different. Big boys will have big toys. So long story short about the auction, we outbid the bidders and took this bad boy home and it came with some extras. Let us open up this box. Love the protection. Slide this guy out very, very carefully. Beautiful. Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett from the retro line. Super, super cool. All right, so we did buy a very nice and minty Rebel Commander. Very, very clean figure. Very, very nice. Little bit of paint missing from the boot right there, but that is the only thing that I can see wrong with it. And this guy just looks great. It's inside an acrylic already. There you go, we have the Luke. So we'll take out the Luke first and examine the Luke. A little dirty, so we're gonna have to clean them up before we put them inside the case. I love the way that this mold is quilted. Look at the headscarf, the way it just looks like it's flowing inside the wind. And here it is. Wow, the box is a little bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but it is a beautiful looking box nonetheless. It has a little bit of a vein right there because it's been folded, it looks like, once or twice. The color is really, really great too. But look at this, Toys R Us. These stickers bring me back, but look at that price tag. Let's open this up very, very careful and take a look at the Wampa. So the inserts are in there, which is cool. That's what you expect when you buy these things. And this is a very, wow. It is a very, very white Wampa. I think you guys need sunglasses to see this. Wow, it even smells new. <laughs> What's inside here also is the paper for it. It's the Empire Strikes Back catalog. But yeah, these are pure nostalgia, everybody. And then right here, you have the reply card that used to come with the Kenner products. And uh, they would include these just to get feedback from everybody. And I've only seen these. I've never held one in my hand. So I'm really, really stoked to have one of these. So man, what a mail haul. Wow, what a fun unboxing. Love it. So let's do some major crossing off our list. First, with our display Luke Hoth that we picked up from eBay for $32.96. Next, with our Rebel Commander that came with the Wampa, so we're gonna mark that off as zero and let the price ride with the Wampa. 
and let's cross off our grating Lukoth that we got with the Wampa, so we're gonna let that price ride with the Wampa itself. And we got our display Wampa that we picked up from eBay for a grand total of $33.14. And finally, our box Wampa that we got on an Imperial Commissary auction on Facebook, and we picked that up for $380 but that also included the carded Boba Fett, the Commander, and the Luka. And what's a Wampa if you can't do this classic shot with it? So thanks for going with me on that mission to explore all the environments from the vintage Star Wars movies. I was ecstatic to pick up all those great toys from Hoth, and I really do think the best toys came from Hoth. And I'm really glad that we can add those to our collections to get closer and closer to our goal. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And if you wanna join me on social media, all of my links are on the homepage of my YouTube. And if you need any collecting supplies for your journey, there are a multitude of links in my description. And when you do click and buy from those links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me, please subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you can know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.